The way we interact with passwords and logins has vastly changed over the years. Traditionally, you'd see a website that has a username or an email address field and then a password field. Nowadays, what you'll see though is a lot of sites have a show password button. Now, you can decide on whether that's a good idea or not, but it is part of the accepted login flow. Sometimes you'll see a site that lets you log in through a completely separate service and that is used to manage your account. That would be like a login through Facebook, login through Google, things like that. Sometimes a site will support a hardware authentication device like say a UV key, and other times people don't even know what their passwords are because they're using a password manager. And these changes occurred relatively slowly, so people managed to adapt as they were occurring. So what happens if you take a bunch of people and then you dump them into a completely different paradigm? You dump a ton of people onto Linux through the use of the Steam Deck. Now you might be wondering what Linux has to do with any of this. So on the Steam Deck you have the ability to access a desktop mode and there's been a bunch of people who have never used Linux before exploring the terminal for the very first time. Honestly I think that's really really cool, it's not something you need to do on the Steam Deck but if the option is there, you might as well try it out. And on Linux, there is a lot of programs that do this. So this right here is the password tool. First thing I need to do is enter my password. If I start typing, you don't get any feedback whatsoever. It's not just the case with the password tool. This happens with sudo, with a bunch of other applications where you're trying to enter a password. This is basically the standard way of handling password entry, especially in the terminal. There is some different cases in graphical situations, but at least in the terminal situation, this is what occurs. And once you've messed around, experimented with Linux for a bit, this basically becomes second nature. You go and enter your password and then go about the rest of your day. But when you're new to Linux, it can seem a bit weird. And if there's enough people trying it, things like this might start to happen. Unable to set a console password, any advice? And in this absolutely wonderful video, as you can see, trying to run the password command and new password, okay, sure. And they get very confused because when they start typing a letter, nothing shows up on their screen. They keep typing and typing and typing it and nothing is happening. That's not the only one. There is this one here saying basically the exact same thing and this one as well. And there was a bunch of other threads all with this exact same problem. They don't think the password entry is working because they don't see anything on the screen. And all of the experienced Linux users could sit back and laugh and say, oh, these people are so dumb, they don't know how Linux works. They don't know how the password command works, or how sudo works, or anything like that. But why should they? They've never used this system before, and they've been dumped into a completely different paradigm. What Valve should have done, obviously, I don't think they should have gone and like modified the applications. I know with sudo, you can enable PW feedback, but a lot of other applications out there don't have a way to show any sort of feedback. What Valve should have done is during the setup process or in the manual or somewhere in the Steam Deck documentation, make some sort of memo about how this operates. Obviously not everybody would read the memo. Even if you had a section of your FAQ that literally said, help, I can't enter a password into my terminal. I can't enter a password into the password command or sudo or anything like that. But it certainly would cut back on some of the spam in the subreddit and the forums asking the exact same question, over and over and over again. So if you happen to have found this video because you were having this problem, just know that if you go and run something like sudo or password or anything like that, when you can't see your password, that is the way it is supposed to work. That is not a bug. Just type it like you normally would and everything is going to work. But even though this isn't a bug and isn't an unintended design flaw, it doesn't mean that every single person is in agreement in how this should be handled. There have been many discussions for one side or the other, and one really good discussion is this bug report from back in 2008 discussing whether sudo should give some level of visual feedback. Now, this being an old discussion does have some things that are kind of out of date, like at the time, sudo didn't have the PW feedback option, 
but even so, it goes over a lot of the benefits and drawbacks of actually having visual feedback. But it is really long, so let's go over the main points. First one being when you're using a tool that gives you some sort of visual feedback, whether it's a dot or an asterisk or anything else, that gives you a very, very clear indication of the length of the password. And when you're trying to crack a password, knowing the length of the password vastly, vastly reduces the entire space of passwords it could actually be. Now, if you have a friend standing over your shoulder, that's probably not the person who's going to be cracking your password. And even in that situation, they can probably see what you're typing anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal if they also know the length. But if we're talking a more... I guess, vulnerable situation, like you're a Facebook, you're a Twitter, you're running some servers that are really, really valuable. There is not really any reason to add an extra vulnerability just for the sake of adding a vulnerability when nobody in those situations is asking for that functionality. Sure, it's probably not realistically exploitable, but on the off chance that it actually is, there's not really any reason to bring in that functionality, but having it there as an option is totally fine. At least in some cases. When you are directly dealing with passwords, this is something you want to be extra sure is secure. You're not introducing anything that is going to lead to some sort of exploit to skip past the login or to get the login data out or anything like that. And there have been situations in the past, for example, with the PW feedback option in sudo, where they haven't been programmed as well as some people thought and led to a buffer overflow bug that let you completely skip past the authorization. This isn't a risk that developers want to take unless they are absolutely certain that they know what they are doing. And because a lot of devs just don't want to deal with that risk, they just don't bother building it in the first place. Not to say that having the option is bad, and at this point, the option has been fixed in sudo. If the option is programmed correctly, and we are certain that it does not have a buffer overflow bug, I'm totally fine with it, it being there. If someone wants to go and use it, be my guest. I don't really care what you do in your system. Now, both those reasons are great and all, but there is another reason, which is probably just way, way more important. When building a password entry system like this, especially when building it on a terminal, this is just the way that it's always been done. This method vastly, vastly predates Linux and vastly predates Linus ever even considering making a kernel. This is just the way it's always been done on Unix and Unix-like systems. Whether you're on Linux, whether you're on some sort of BSD, even if you're over on macOS, this is just the way these tools have been built. Just like how you are never completely moving past man pages. Man pages are part of what it means to be a Unix-like system. Part of what it means to have a password entry on a Unix-like system is not having visual feedback. And there are so many legacy applications and so many applications still being built that all follow this exact same paradigm. It's just part of the way you design Unix-like applications. Me and basically everybody here has probably used both interaction methods at this point. And at least for me, I don't even notice which is being used half the time. If there is feedback, if there isn't feedback, I just enter the password and then go about my day. But I guess for the sake of usability, it probably is better to have some level of feedback just to make sure that people know that they are actually typing something. But let me know your thoughts down below. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scrab, Stunning Bearer Pay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.